Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of The Committee Reads. I'm your host, Kaiju X, and with me today, I have Alex, Grayshot, Nagoda, Ditto, and Joe. Today, we will be going over match 113, King Kong vs. Frankenstein, by Kenneth James. Kong snarled, tearing against his chains displayed under a massive tent in the center of the city for all to see. The once mighty king of Faroe Island, now public, now on public display for all to ridicule. The flashing of cameras angered him, as did the shouts of the crowd. He had to get free. He put all his force into tearing at the chains, but could not so much as move. Kong let out a mighty roar of fury at his situation before relaxing having exhausted himself. As the eighth wonder of the world let himself recover, the cries of protesters broke the silence, the crowd being bro broken by chanting protesters, holding up signs ordering the return of Kong to his natural habitat. In a laboratory in, on the outside of town, a scientist watched the events transpiring and laughed. This was Gil Glil Glidor. Glidor? I guess Glidor? This was Glidor. Glider? <laughs> Glider. This was Glider, a radical scientist in the field of biology. This is perfect, he yelled, watching the protests. Public sentiment of being against... Against... Bleh. Let me try that one again. <laughs> Public sentiment being against to bring Kong here only helps my plan, he said, rubbing his hands together. It was a stroke of genius funding that mission to Faro to retrieve Kong. Now I'll be able to show everyone my genius, he said, turning to a huge frozen humanoid nearby, cables hooked into it. When I resurrect you to stop Kong, I'll be famous, he yelled, turning back to the terminal. Time to start the show. Then he pressed a button on the computer. At Glider's touch, touch small explosives planted under the anchors of chains went off, awake, weakening them enough that when Kong went into another fit of rage, they were torn from the ground, setting the massive ape loose. Realizing he was free, Kong let out a fierce roar of fury, beating his chest as the crowd was thrown into a panic. Now completely inf infuriated, Kong tore the tent surrounding him to the ground. Once free of his entrapment, he smashed a, a nearby building with his fists, intent on taking out his pent-up frustrations on those who had stolen him stolen him from his island home. Pass. Uh, great shot. Glidor <laughs> smirked as Kong tore through the city in a berserk rampage. Definitely did not mute my mic and forgot to unmute it, no. <laughs> Gosh darn it. Perfect, he exclaimed. Now to quote the one who made you, he said, turning towards the frozen body and flipping a switch, sending a massive surge of electricity into the creature. Within seconds, the creature began to stir, a human-like hand erupting out of the ice block. It's alive! It's alive! Glidor yelled while laughing. Man, I've always wanted to say that, he said, watching the colossal Frankenstein's monster rise from his icy tomb. Frankenstein groaned, looking around him in confusion. Where was he? Last he remembered, he'd battled with Baragon and had fallen to the earth, unknowing that Glidor had spent over a year quietly excavating him and transporting him to San Francisco, where he'd spent months repairing his body to resurrect him. Frankenstein, called Glidor, getting the huge human-like kaiju's attention. I am Glidor, the one who restored you to life. You understand me? He asked, getting a slow nod. I assumed you would. Now there isn't much time. You like humans, am I right? He continued, Frankenstein slowly nodding, still confused at the situation. Well, a monster named King Kong is attacking the city. You must stop him, he explained, showing the image of the screen, enraging Frankenstein. Glidor smirked at the reaction, pressing a button and opening a large door in the side of the building to allow Frankenstein to leave the lab. Good luck, he said, watching Frankenstein exit and head off to battle King Kong. Glidor then laughed, turning back to the monitor. It doesn't matter if King Kong beats that hairy ape or not. So as long as he tries to protect the city, it's to my advantage. Kong let bellow of, let bellow of rage. 
ripping a building apart with his massive arms, the chains still hanging from them. He continued his fierce rampage through the city until another shout of rage attracted his attention. He spun around to see Frankenstein staring him down, challenging him with intent to stop the ape-like kaiju's rampage. Kong roared and beat his chest, responding with a warning. Frankenstein refused to back down and snarled back, getting in a fighting posture. The giant ape howled in fury and charged his new rival at full speed, throwing a punch at Frankenstein's head only for the mutant human to duck under and tackle him in the gut, throwing him to the ground and driving fists into his face. Kong roared in shock and replied by swiping Frankenstein with a clubbing blow, knocking him off. The eighth wonder of the world was quickly on the offensive and smashed his huge fists down on Frankenstein's back, driving him straight into the ground. Kong howled and brought his arms up to slam down on Frankenstein's back, only to have his target roll out of the way and evade the attack as the giant ape's fist slammed into the pavement. Frankenstein took a chunk of rubble left behind from Kong's rampage and slammed it full force into Kong's face, driving the ape backwards. Before Kong could respond, Frankenstein charged forwards and put his entire weight behind a punch to his rival's face, slamming Kong back first into a building. Pass. Frankenstein kept up his offense by attempting to slam a car into Kong's cranium, only for his arm to be caught in the great ape's strength to force him back. Once on his feet, Kong punched Frankenstein in the stomach, doubling him over. Before Frankenstein could recover, Kong grabbed Frankenstein and lifted him overhead, throwing him and sending the giant man flying through a building. Kong snarled as he was quickly upon his enemy and grabbing him by the ankle. With Frankenstein in his grasp, the giant ape swung him around with his great strength, and before launching him a good distance, and before launching him a good distance away, leaving him laying at the base of, a, of the pyramid building. Kong snarled, charging Frankenstein at full speed, but before he could reach him, Frankenstein got to his feet and hurled a gasoline tinker into King Kong's face, a resulting explosion blinding the ape. Frankenstein wisely got out of the ape's path as he plowed through the structure and it collapsed on top of him. Frankenstein surveyed the rubble, knowing Kong was buried in there and likely still alive. Frankenstein wisely tore the spire off the building and used it as a spear, stabbing the rubble to try and finish it. After three stabs, Frankenstein's weapon suddenly refused to be pulled out from its place as Kong erupted from the rubble, spear clasped in his hand. He pulled hard, throwing Frankenstein right into a powerful punch from his other arm, driving Frankenstein straight onto his back. <clears throat> Kong leapt onto on his smaller humanoid form and drove pummeling blows into Frankenstein's face. Realizing he was in trouble, Frankenstein brought his legs up and kicked Kong in the stomach, throwing him off and back first into another building. As the ape attempted to stand, Frankenstein leapt on his back and began wrapping and wrapped his arms around Kong's neck, strangling him with his own great strength. King Kong bellowed in panic, his oxygen cut off as he tried to hard to pull Frankenstein off, but the humanoid had the leverage advantage, and he couldn't manage to force himself free. <clears throat> Sorry, need something to drink. Uh, realizing he wouldn't last this last long without air, King Kong grabbed Frankenstein's leg, threw himself and the humanoid backwards into a building to try to and dislodge him. When that failed, he tried it again to no avail. However, a third time made Frankenstein's grip to slip. Wait, a third time made Frankenstein's grip to slip enough that Kong could get his fingers under his arm forcing it out enough to free himself and flip Frankenstein over him to the ground. Frankenstein, though, managed to roll through and get back to his feet quickly on the attack again by picking up and slamming a nearby truck into Kong's head, forming, forcing him backwards. Before he could capitalize, Kong grabbed hold of his arm and threw him face first into the ground. The great ape followed up by grabbing Frankenstein's head and brutally driving the humanoid's face into the ground multiple times breaking his nose. Before more damage could be done, Frankenstein snatched some rubble from the remains of the pyramid building and threw it in Kong's eyes in desperation, blinding him and allowing Frankenstein to escape his grasp. Realizing the ape was too strong for him to fight head on, Frankenstein turned and ran towards the ocean, looking for a way to even the odds to hopefully find his son Gyra somewhere in the bay. <laughs> Once 
Once Kong cleared his eyes, he saw Frankenstein fleeing and refused to allow an, in his mind, unprovoked attack to go unpunished. Yes. I think those are chews. What? Oh, no, my little brother came into the room. Asked about laundry. Uh, Kong cha chased after Frankenstein. What? How many was that? that was that uh, two or? That you, okay. you have one more to go, man. Just one. Let go to that. That question seemed Cause... far more interesting than this match. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Looking around, Frankenstein saw that San Francisco Bay Bridge and saw and came up with an idea. Remembering the chains hanging from Kong's arm before wading into the bay, Kong chased after him but soon caught up, grabbing him by the shoulder. But Frankenstein swung around and pushed Kong with all his might, driving the, ape, the great ape backwards underwater. Before he could surface, Frankenstein rapidly turned and continued towards the bridge, beginning to climb on the 227 meter tall supports. Is it really that tall? Uh, the, oh, San Francisco Bridge? I think so. I know. The ape followed close behind and began climbing as well. With the bridge's structure groaning under the weight of the two monsters, who together made up half its height, Frankenstein knew he had to do something quickly. As, Frank, as Kong grabbed his ankle, Frankenstein kicked him in the face with his other leg, hanging on tight. Another kick freed his ankle, allowing Frankenstein to climb up to the top of the structure, where he waited for Kong, now having the high ground. <laughs> However, the ape was no stranger to combat at a, a high altitude and climbed up after him. Frankenstein and Kong quickly began exchanging blows, each trying to gain the upper hand. Realizing the support both of them hung onto would break at any moment from their combined weight. Frankenstein took note of his location and grabbed Kong by the throat, throwing them both off, managing to get the ape under him as they plowed through the... I need to catch my breath. As they plowed through the center of the bridge into the water below. They really need some more... some periods there. I can agree to that. Quick, yeah. Quickly regain... How was this results. approved? <laughs> it was old times, my boy. Old times. You gotta use a lot of commas in your matches, man. <laughs> Frankenstein grabbed onto the support cables of the bridge that had broken from the impact of both of both plummeting through the bridge and entangled the arms of the stunned ape with as many as he could get his hands on. In addition to those he tangled in on the way down, pass. Uh, hang on. Uh, I think it's me. Yeah, ditto, you're up. Oh. Kong roared in fury, straining against the cables with all his might, threatening to bring the entire bridge down. Realizing he had to end it before Kong broke free, Frankenstein grabbed hold of one of the chains hanging from his arms and wrapped it around his throat, strangling Kong with it. Kong flailed and struggled, trying desperately to get free, but to no avail. Soon beginning to lose strength, Frankenstein began to tire long before Kong did, but kept going, choking the life from the eighth wonder of the world. However, as Kong lost consciousness, Frankenstein noticed something in his eyes. They were thinking eyes. Not like Baragon's feral monstrous eyes. He realized Kong wasn't just an animal, he was a thinking creature, like he was. Frankenstein released the chain before he could kill Kong, leaving the ape unconscious, but very much still alive. That's also when he realized something. Kong had been chained up. That meant Kong had been a prisoner. Not just a monster that was there of its own accord. Curious, Frankenstein picked up the ends of the chains, seeing that they had been torn, hadn't been torn out, but instead blasted off, still carrying scorch marks from the explosives. Despite not fully grasping the concept, he realized that Kong must have been willingly freed by someone. He then heard a car pulling up and looked, seeing the lighter stepping out of his car and on the most intact part of the bridge. And pass. Joe, you're up. Oh. Uh, Frankenstein glared at Glider. Uh, mm. Glider applaud. Before that. 
Glider applauded Frankenstein. Ah, got it. Glider applauded Frankenstein. Well done, he said. You've defeated Kong. You'll be a hero. And most Im more importantly, I'll be the hero who revived you and sent you to the city. He explained. I'll be famous. He said ecstatic. Now, please kill Kong and take his body back to my lab. I'd be ve I'd very much like to take a look at him. He said. He's my property. I funded the expedition that found him, so it's only right I get the first opportunity to perform an autopsy and find out what makes him tick. Frankenstein glared at Glider, realizing he was the one who brought Kong here in the first place, and judging by how happy he was, he let Kong loose to fight him just to prove a point. Enraged, Frankenstein roared and clenched his fists. Oh, you've realized the truth, haven't you? Replied Glider, not intimidated. Yes, I did bring him here just to fight you. But you won't kill me, he replied. You love humans far too much for that, don't you? Pass. Oh boy. Frankenstein growled. Grinder had a point. The idea of killing any human, even an evil, one, sickened him. Still, he knew someone who would gladly do it instead. Frankenstein turned and shook Dong awake, roaring to him and pointing to Grinder. Kong glared at the small human before curling his lips and letting out a fierce roar. Now, Frankenstein, don't do anything rash, I tell ya, said Grinder. No longer so smug, to his horror, Frankenstein tore the cables holding Dong, allowing the mace massive ape to free himself. Grinder screamed in terror and jumped in his car, taking off down the bridge, trying to escape the range. Dong, Dong tore the bridge in front of the evil man, grabbing his car in his massive hand and roaring furiously. Before Grinder could even scream, Kong threw the car with all his might, sending it through the air, crashing into the hillside on shore, exploding it in a large fire. Having taken, it, uh, taken his revenge on he who deserved it, Kong let out a fierce roar again, beating his dick. Frankenstein helped break off Kong's shackles once he calmed down. Getting a thankful nod, Kong roared and grunted, thanking the giant for his help. Later, Frankenstein stood on the shore watching as Kong surfed the surf towards his island home. It sounded weird. Hmm. Frankenstein then looked over to the road city, realizing that while Kong hadn't come on his own, Gordon, there were other monsters who threatened mankind. Frankenstein decided the best course of action was simple, stay and defend mankind. Frankenstein marched towards the mountains, intending to find himself a place to live in the world. Winner. Uh, the author. Uh, I guess. <laughs> or, no, it's a draw between us and the author. Anyway, uh, no, uh, <laughs> Frankenstein and King Kong. If this one will... Winner, anyone but me. <laughs> <laughs> Loser, <laughs> Alex. <laughs> anyway... Uh, anyway, this one was. Uh, They're gonna make a poop baby. <laughs> nah, I like. It's hard for me to really comment because it didn't like. I guess outside of some uh, areas where some sent where you could have uh, broken the sentences down to you know sentences extra periods that were very much needed. Uh, really, like you know, and maybe some of the giant paragraphs could have been broken down to smaller chunks as well. Yes, I just happened to get those three, the three largest paragraphs in this match. <laughs> Sorry, <dude>. you're welcome. <laughs> but uh, uh, I think like this is a this is an okay match from Kenneth James. I don't think it's particularly his strongest. Glidor, you know, it's just kind of generic bad. Like it's just kind of generic bad scientist, evil scientist who wants to do evil things rather than the rational or logical thing. No, he's just an asshole for the sake of being an asshole. Uh, and not good at keeping his own secrets. No. <laughs> then again, he probably thought Frankenstein would be stupid, so... But apparently the dude's rich <laughs> enough to fund the expedition to get Kong. It's like, you could have used that money for other things to make yourself famous, but... Eh, then again, like immediate mom. gratification, so... Uh, again, you could have your mom fund it. <laughs> <laughs> well, um... Anyway. 
Yeah. Uh, overall for this match, yeah, I, I do agree you, like, organized this far better. The wording's not bad, though. Like, the actual battle's solid. Yeah, yeah. Like, mm -hmm. Like, like, the, and I think the uh, the actual battle and the ending, the resolution itself, is very unique. Like, I like, like, there are a lot of unique things about this match. Def, definitely. Uh, the lack, it's just lack it, of electricity for one. No. Uh, yeah. Also, the draw, like calling actually and stopping the fight with Frankenstein, like that was pretty different. Oh, pretty different compared to uh, what usually happens with these types of matches. Mm. Yeah, I could I could agree with that. So it definitely has its pros for sure. Keep in mind that this was written at a time when the monsters were half their height. So 227 meters for the Golden Gate Bridge uh, may not be that impressive compared to a 90 meter King Kong. But this was written with a 45 meter King Kong in mind. So yeah, true. But anyway, uh, that my, my like yeah, I think this one's pretty like I feel like uh he's. There are some other stronger ones, like uh, like one ten or uh, destroyer versus header. I feel like is a stronger one from him. Uh, but no, it's like yeah, this one is unique. It's sol it's solid enough to get its point across. Uh, it's it's just not one that particularly uh, tickles me in any right way. Uh, just outside of learning, outside of learning the fact that there was an, another original character here. <laughs> But, uh, but even then, he's not, like, anything too special. Uh, but he, he serves the needs of the story and how the uh, story comes to a drop. That's about it. Yeah, I can pretty much say that. I, like, yeah, he's unique because he has to... He's of Kong, like, an, a Frankenstein and Kong villain. Which is why I think the name even sounds a little bit, like, old-timey and such. Yeah, but, yeah. But no, I, I. At the end of the day, I don't. Again, I, this is not a. This isn't bad. Maybe bad in regards to how it was like designed. But that's that's the most I can say about it. Otherwise, it does a lot of unique things. And overall, I think this is this is a very memorable match for me. Maybe not for the fights, but for everything else. Hmm. Yeah, I could see that. Anyway, Alex, what do you think of it? Who the fuck said that? <laughs> <laughs> Who said boring. anything? Uh, anyway. It was boring. Just your typical standard fight. Oh, no. So, to go, what do you think of it? Uh... Really long. As you can tell, he's enthralled. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Nicola's <Nicholas> enthralled. <laughs> it was long. Felt longer than the other one for some reason. Probably because I I got the long ones, but still. Uh, notice Frankenstein's using cars as weapons again. And Banner's okay. Also, surprise, Kong didn't use the chains as weapons. Yeah, they kind of... I mean, this is before Kong Skull Island, so he, they didn't... <laughs> that concept was too far out there. <laughs> <laughs> was it mainstream enough yet? No, it wasn't. <laughs> he, didn't think to be, he didn't think to become... Uh, what's his name? Kratos. <laughs> he wasn't enough of a thinking animal in this match. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh yeah, nice little reference by the way. The thinking animal element. So I like the fact that Frankenstein oh, yeah. kinda caught on to that. It was like, oh yeah, this he's not a pure beast or something smart about him. Uh anyway. Almost every King Kong match always comes back to that. Kong, a thinking animal. <laughs> and then something <laughs> something or other. Right. Because people can't think of anything else other than, other than that line. Which is from the American version only. <laughs> so, this is How much of a fact they're going to use that line in the mo when the movie comes out? Oh man, that would be crazy. Anyway. Uh, yeah. uh, ditto, what'd you think of it? 
I thought it was like a it's a good short match. It's nothing like spectacular to me. And it's not bad. It's it hits that sweet spot like right in the middle. Uh the band is okay. It's good. It, so it, general, it does what it tickles your pickles. <laughs> tickles your pickles. <laughs> yeah. The banner does its job. Uh Glidor I think only shows up in this match and that's it. Seriously, and that's perfectly fine over? because you have guys like Doctor Who who are a bit more recognizable and they fill in the role just perfectly so I'm fine if Glidor never shows up again mm-hmm. oh no he's not particularly uh, memorable at IMO but it is I think yeah like Greyshot said it is kind of like an old tiny like something you would see out of like early Universal Frankenstein so yeah uh, I'm trying to think. Oh, wait. the only thing I would have done slightly differently is have Kong be a bit more apprehensive to Frankenstein when he's like trying to help him. Like maybe Kong like takes his arm away from Frankenstein. He's like, "No, nah, I'll untie myself." Hmm. And maybe have Frankenstein do a jet jaguar and try to like sign language his way to explaining the situation to Kong, and then have him go off and kill Glidor. Hmm. Yeah, just a little something. That's just me. Other than that, it was a good match. I can mm, see yeah. that. I can see that. Yeah. All right, uh, Joe, what did you think of the match? I thought it was okay. Uh, I don't enjoy it as much as the the other Kong and Frankenstein match. But it has has some interesting things, but it's not particularly engaging to me. Just put that on the back of the KWC DVD. <laughs> KWC DVD. Yeah. All right, and that's the end. Actually, of this actually, we'll see you. Bye. Hey, hey, hold on, hold on. I have one more <laughs> thing to say. If you're not a fan of Toho's Frankenstein, good news. This is the last time you'll see him for a long time. <laughs> Wait, people like Toho's Frankenstein? I do, you sucker. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. So, when does he show up next? Uh, 193. Oh, dang. And Kong appears again in 169. Oh, no. He'll truly be <laughs> donged by then. Anyway, uh, <laughs> until then, oh, no. we'll see you guys next time for the next Committee Reads. Till then, folks. <laughs>